I know there are a few more people that are going to show up, but I'll go ahead and get this thing kicked off here. So we're going to talk today about modifying the immutable. This is how we're going to attach additional data to our OCI images as we ship them out into the field. And so quick background on me. My name is Brandon Mitchell, as the title said there. I do work for Boxboat. We are now an IBM company, Big Blue bought us a while back. And um, we're always looking for people that want to either be our clients or engineers that want to join us as well. We do a lot of consulting around this stuff. Relevant to what we're talking about today, I am an OCI maintainer on the image and distribution specs. So when you see things we're doing wrong, feel free to complain, you know, you can throw them directly at me. And you'll see me picking on reg client, a little command line called reg cuddle in a bunch of my demos. That's me picking the tool that I know the best because the maintainer, I happen to be very familiar with them because I'll be able to get things fixed on these slides because it's me. So I'm not trying to pick favorites there, it's just the one that I know the best. All right. For container images that are out there today, I'm hoping that a lot of people here know what a container image is already. You've probably seen it. There are layers that build up these container images. You've likely run the build commands. You kind of have a rough idea what's in there. You've probably seen it. There's metadata about it. You build it and you say, this is the command I want to kick off. This is the environments that it's going to be shipped with, labels, things like that. And lately, we've probably been seeing a lot of these multi-platform images out there. People get the Mac M1s and they say, we want to be able to run this stuff natively on our machine. Let's start shipping an image that can run both on the Intel and the Mac all over the place, or maybe the Windows machines before if they were doing that, being able to have these cross-platform images. So all of that falls into how this works as we're shipping these images on the specs, and I want to hit a little bit of that and give you an idea of what's happening there. But first, to talk about the lowest level is we have a content addressable store. The content that we ship across the container registry is named by the hash of that content itself. And so whenever you're looking for something, you give it the hash, it gives back content that extracts to that hash. And so as you see, I'm running this thing through there. I run it through a SHA-256 checksum command, and it outputs the same hash as what I put in there. And so that gives you some guarantee that nobody changed it in the process there. You, you know that content was never mo modified in transit. It also tells us, in this case, the content that I'm looking at is a layer. And so if you know container images, you know layers. You've probably seen more than enough of these in your time. This is just a tar file with uh, gzip compression, and we can extract this. And this is one chunk of our images that we see out there today. So when you have these images shipped around, this is probably what most people think of as the image. The other part you might not think about as much is all the other metadata, the JSON data in there in this case. So we're shipping also the same blob API. So we were shipping before just a stream of tar. This is now a stream of JSON. And in this case, I've got the path, the environment that I'm using, labels, the history in there. If you're curious on that, you can uh, do like a Docker history command and investigate all the steps that were used to build up the image before, and you can do a little bit of history checking on that. All of this is just metadata on our image. So we've got the metadata that's there. We've got all the layers. You need to assemble those two things together. And to do that, we hit a different API in OCI, which is the manifest API. And it outputs some different JSON. We're good with JSON in OCI spec. So if you ever need somewhere that you feel like a safe place with JSON, we're a good place to be. In this case, we have got a config. And so that was the config JSON. And then we've got an array of layers. And so these are all your layers of the file system. You just apply these one by one in order. And that's how you get your container image built up. This is how this is all stored up on the container registries themselves. And so probably some details some people don't care about so much. But it's going to be important later on when we start getting into some of the details. You'll see these patterns repeat over and over again. And so it's useful to see how we're already doing it to understand why we picked different decisions as we were doing things in the future. So with this, I think people get a little tired about seeing text on the screen sometimes. So I'd like to draw at least somewhat semi-pretty pictures, maybe not quite. Um, I don't see tomatoes flying yet, but that's probably just because that wasn't on the, on the snack list earlier there. But the V3 is a tag. And that tag, can it is mutable. It can point to different manifests over time. So you can have a point to one manifest one day, a different manifest the next day. You can have multiple tags point to the same manifest. Think of it as a symbolic link. The manifest itself has its digest. And so you can hash that, di hash that content. That hash itself has inside of it all the, you know, the, the node itself that you were just hashing for the manifest has all the hashes of the config blob of the layers all in there. So what we get there is a nice little structure where you know that nothing changed in the process. When you pin your images and you're saying, I want to run this image with this specific hash, what you're pinning is that manifest hash. And so if you ever say, I want to pull down this one specific image, that's what you're pulling down is that manifest hash. Then result of this, we get a nice immutability result. Because what we have is that content addressable store we were first talking about. 
We've also got a structure that is called a DAG, a uh, directed acyclic graph. That structure kind of tells you there's no loops in the data structure we're doing. But more related to what you're probably familiar with if you've done CS classes in the past is a Merkle tree, which is that we create a node. Inside that node are the hashes of all the child objects, and inside of those child objects, the hashes of all those child objects. And the content of each of those things is itself hashed. You know, the, the hash of each of those child objects is the hash of the data. So you know that if anybody changed one of those child objects, its hash would change, which would change its parent node, which changes its parent node, and you know that you know, if that parent node's hash hasn't changed, none of the child objects have changed. So it gives you that nice guarantee that nothing in there has been modified. You get all that immutability promise, which is gonna be a problem later on when we're talking about some of this stuff. And so we need to fix this of, you know, how do we add extra data, data to this? But I'm jumping ahead of myself. Another type of manifest out there that uh, got added a while later was to say we need to have multi-platform images. And to do that, we created a data structure called a manifest list. In OCI, we call it an index. And what this is, just an array of manifest. Now, when we had the layers and we started pulling all those, we didn't really care about which layer was which. They were just in order, and you just applied them all in order. When we're pulling down a manifest, we want to know which manifest we want to download. And so to do that, we need some extra data in here. And I, I failed to use one of the terms there. Uh, whenever you see one of these fields that has the digest, the me type, and the size, that in OCI is called a descriptor. And we use those all over the place in OCI. It's just a pointer to another piece of data somewhere in OCI. But we had to add onto that descriptor some extra data to know which manifest to pull. And so since this is a multi-platform manifest, we add the platform field in there to say, here's the platform, if you're looking at this list, to find the one you're looking for as a runtime. So that gives you some kind of context when you're looking this up. OK, I know which one I want. And now you can pull that one specifically for your own use case. You don't have to download every single manifest just to find the one you're looking for. The resulting picture is going to now look like this, where we've got our tag, which is going to point to the index, which is our manifest, you know, list of manifest, which under that, since the list of manifest is multiple manifest. And then each of those has their own config. Each of those has their own set of layers. We have this nice big structure here. And again, this is all a Merkle tree. You get that hash of that index you know that none of the content under there has been changed because those hashes have been pulled up. All right, so that's one half of the background. One other piece of background here is we've got a lot of people that are pushing artifacts up to container registries today already. And so to do that, I'm just gonna take a little bit of data. I'm gonna say it contains electrons, it's my data. That's really fancy. I think pretty much all the data we push up to registries contains electrons. This is the simplest bill of materials ever. And for this, I'd push it up there as a blob. A blob before, you saw me pushing a tar, you saw me pushing a JSON. Registries don't care what you put in a blob. Put whatever you want in a blob, they'll take it. That's really awesome if you have random arbitrary data you wanna push up to a registry. But blobs themselves are not really preserved by registries. They need something else. You can't tag a blob, and if a blob is left without a manifest pointing to it, you don't have a good way for the registry to keep track of it, so it just says on this next garbage collection around that, hey, nobody's using that, let me go ahead and clean it up. We don't want that, we wanna keep these things preserved, right? So to do that, we need to wrap that blob with a manifest. Pretty simple. Same manifest we were using for the image. We use this exact same media type for this thing, the exact same data structure. I put in here the media type of the config is now the media type of whatever our artifact is. And so I said this is the electron bomb config. And then my layer is my actual data that I'm shipping out. And so I shipped out this layer of the electron bomb data. And there's the digest of my blob that I was looking for. The other one, the digest in there was kind of an empty thing. I'll, I'll circle back to that later on, talking about more details on what we can do in there. But this is what we're using today for Helm charts. This is what we're using today if people have a, um, a Flux and they're using GitOps and Flux to store their data on container registries. A lot of existing projects, I think Singularity out there, they're using this exact same structure to push their data up to container registries. You don't need any new fancy stuff. This exists right now in, in OCI today. So you can push all the data you want up there. So now the challenge. The challenge is we've got all this data we're starting to ship up to registries. We've got SBOMs out there. We've got annotations. We've got vulnerability reports. All this stuff is related to an image. And so when we pull down our app image, we don't necessarily know what is the metadata that's associated with that image. What SBOMs are associated with me? What signatures are associated with me? We need to be able to make this connection between the two. And when we pull down this image, that image is immutable. It's got that digest. People depend on that pin. They don't want to see that thing change. And so how can you get that reference to that thing that is pinned without modifying it? That hence the title of the talk. So 
How do we do that? There have been multiple suggestions of how we could possibly do that. One of them early on I've seen was to say, well, I'm the image originator. Uh, Docker actually came up with this one and said, hey, we're, we're building all these images, we're originating it. Let's just go ahead and throw it right in the index. And so they started throwing extra data in the index that said, hey, I've got an extra record in here that I'm gonna point to my previous record in the index, and that way I know whenever I pull this one list of all the manifests, I've got not only the image manifest, but I've got all the metadata in here along with it, and I can just kind of query it. That works good if you pull it from that top level tag. Doesn't work good if someone accidentally decides or intentionally decides to pull it from that digest of that platform specific manifest because there's no way to come back up to this. You can have the same single platform manifest listed in a whole bunch of indexes. You don't know which one they came in and downloaded to pull it from. And yet there's also the challenge that some people decide to pin on this index itself. And so this index has a digest, people pin on that, and so now you can't change it. You can't mutate this thing without breaking anybody's, anyone's workflow that depend on that digest not changing. So how do we do this? We went ahead and spun up a working group in OCI. Decided, you know, what else can we do but you know, basically build a group of people that want to decide on this stuff, design by committee. It's a great way to do solutions, right? We did have a list of uh, requirements in there. Some of them were things like we wanted efficiency. We wanted to be able to not only make this quick and efficient, but we also wanted to say, let's attach and detach content after we've shipped it out. So we're looking at saying when we ship an image out, maybe upstream is attached to a whole bunch of SBOMs and we only care about our one specific format and our one specific, you know, whether it's JSON, XML, Cyclone DX, SPDX, pick your favorite of those. Some downstream user might only want one of those. Maybe they don't care about any of the upstream signatures because they're gonna re-sign this thing downstream in their own organization by their own internal key, and so they don't even need, need to pull down those upstream signatures. So they may wanna detach all this data that you're assembling upstream, and they wanna attach their own data because they're gonna do their own vulnerability scan in-house, and they're gonna attach their own signatures. So we need to be able to attach and detach data. That was a big key requirement. We also admitted that we didn't know what people are gonna use this for later on. Today, people are using this for SBOM signatures. Tomorrow, people are gonna to wanna to attach cute animal pictures to their images when they ship them out so that it you know, follows the Git standard whenever someone submits a PR. You gotta have the cute animal picture, right? We don't know what people are gonna use this for. We don't have an idea, so we don't wanna to try to build like a distinct set of things and you can only use it for X, Y, and Z. We wanna keep this very flexible. The good news is we weren't working from an empty box. We had a whole bunch of solutions already out there. We had people that are doing this today. If you look at the ORIS group, they were coming out with a effort of their own where they came up with their own manifest for an artifact. So they create a new manifest that registry's gonna work with. And they had a field in that manifest called subject. That field pointed back to the image that it was extending. And so you would create this new artifact on the right, it would be something like your SBOM. It would have a subject that says, I'm the SBOM for this one image. That's you know, whatever your application image is. Now when you pull down that application image, you don't necessarily have a pointer in there to go back and find this, so what you needed was this new API. So they create a refer API that they could query anytime they needed to to say, given this digest of this application image, tell me all the data that points to it. So they created that, there were some downsides to this. One of the downsides was, first off, this artifact manifest, since it wasn't known by registries, would not work with a single registry out there a day until that registry got upgraded with this new functionality. That has an adoption challenge for us. And it also means anybody that implements this needs to know that everywhere, everywhere they're gonna copy this artifact to, that that registry has also been upgraded. So that's, you know, adoption becomes very difficult when you're relying on people to upgrade their registry servers, especially when you talk to someone in the DOD behind an air gap that never upgrades anything for, you know, five years. It, it becomes a challenge. The other difficult effort in here was that refers API didn't exist on any registry, so that was another bit of an adoption challenge. We can at least solve the first problem really easily. Um, we can add extra fields to an existing manifest and follow the OCI spec perfectly fine. And so we allow that, it's JSON, you can add additional data to JSON and we're still within the spec compliance with the old spec and the new spec tells you how to use those new fields when you see it. And the old spec just says, if you don't know what you're doing with it, just kind of ignore it and move on with your day. You know, it's extra data you don't need. So we can do that, that's half the problem. But we still have the first half of the problem where you've got this new API, we need to be able to find this. We don't have that API yet on an existing registry, so you'd be pushing this data with no way to look it up. That's no good. So we had another option out there, which was, hey, um, if anybody out there is familiar with SigStore and Cosign and signing images out there, we've got a way already that they use today, which is they make a special tag out there. Tag has a big, long SHA-256 checksum digest in there of whatever the image is that they're extending, whatever the image is they're signing. They've got that digest in there. So 
they basically leveraged that tag API as their way to make that backwards pointer that they needed. So that works, that's another option. And so the downside of this is that you do have some race conditions out there. If two people are generating some metadata simultaneously, they're gonna look and overwrite each other and potentially have conflicts. And also, people are looking at the tag listing, they don't like seeing a whole big long list of digest in there. They wanna see that I've got version one, version two, and version three, and they wanna be able to pick whatever the latest one is without having to sort through 500 pages of a bunch of digest to, that they didn't care about. So given all that, which option did we pick? Well, it was designed by committee, so we picked them all. The answer is yes, we picked everything, at least initially. And so initially we said yes, and then we kind of came back and said, you know what, we're gonna like take a defer on that new artifact manifest. We're gonna push that one off until later. So we initially had in there, that's been pulled out in the most recent, recent release candidate. But we did go ahead and add the subject field to the image manifest. We also had another field called artifact type to the image manifest. That was some content that we had over in that artifact manifest that we thought would be useful. So we added both of those in there. And we went and decided to say, we'll go ahead and make a refers API. But since not every registry a day has that refers API, hey, we got a cool backup plan here, which we can just push a tag. And so the, re the result here that we came up with looks a little bit like this, gets a little bit busy, but we're gonna have our image on the left-hand side here where we say our image is whatever you know, image spec it is. And we're gonna go find from the digest of that image on the left, go look it up and say, is there anything that points to it? Go find this tag with that digest. And we see that we've got this index that is from that earlier slide, a manifest list. It's a list of manifest. And it's gonna to point to all of our different artifacts that we have that are extending this image. So we got that. And when we add the new refers API, conveniently, it is the exact same picture. We just changed one field in there, which is we now have an API that's managed by the server instead of that tag that we were managing at the client side. But the response is an index, which already exists in the specs. We didn't have to make any changes there at all. You know, that data was already existing, just works. It's nice and portable across everything. End users that are parsing it can parse the exact same data, whether they got it from the API or from that tag they queried. In text, because I can't get too far away from the console before jumping back to it again, what it looks like is I query that tag with that first digest up there. So I saw I had an image with this, with this digest, and so I found a tag that has a very similar format. You swap a colon out with a dash, and you suddenly have a tag instead of an actual content addressable store. And when I query that, I get this index back, and I started putting two extra bits of data in this index. So in that manifest list, I've got the annotations that I pulled up, and I've got the artifact type. So this is very convenient. When you see that whole list of manifests, you need to know which one is the artifact that you're looking for. You need to know which one is a Cyclone DX versus which one is SPDX versus which one is our signature and anything else we're looking for. And maybe you've got five signatures on there, so you want some annotations in there to say this one was signed by Bob, and maybe you've got three different vulnerabilities out there, and you want to find out which vulnerability scan had the most recent creation date on it. You can put all that in the annotations so that you can sort out which one you wanted to pull down. So where do we get that artifact type and those annotations from? Well, it's from the manifest of whatever the artifact is we pushed up. And so we just pull those up into the listing when we generate our listing either from the client side building our tag or from the refers API generating this on the fly for us. We've got the artifact type we can put in there. If the artifact type is not defined, which is not in a lot of the current data, if you look at Helm charts, that sort of stuff, we just only define this the most recent release candidate. Nobody's using this yet other than maybe me. Um, we have got this where we fall back to the config media type. And so if you don't have the artifact type, you look at what the config media type is and you, you work from there. Additionally, all the annotations, we pull those up and then we have that new field at the bottom of the subject. And so that says whenever we run this query for the refers API, whenever we're looking for that tag, we're looking for everything that has the subject field with that one digest in that subject record. So that's how we found our data. All right. A lot of slides, a lot of talking. Let's actually see some demo and see some type in here, see something happen. So I'm gonna spin up two registries in this example. I'm gonna have both of these. I'm gonna set up a couple of variables just to make these pictures a little bit easier to follow. But the first registry is on port 5001. Second registry is gonna be on port 5002. In addition, I'm gonna spin up a couple of variables here for my media types. They're gonna be the OCI manifest for the image and they're gonna be the index. And so I kept everything with the OCI media types. There are Docker media types out there that you would have for some of your images or other things like that. I kept my examples very simple. I'm also gonna set a couple of variables for cosign because I'm gonna use that in some demos where they've got some experimental features that are just being worked on now where you can start shipping your stuff with the new refers API and cosign as well. So for the first 
uh, registry that I'm spinning up is going to be the CNCF distribution project. That is the original Docker registry out there that people might be familiar with. If you ever said Docker run registry colon two, that's what I'm pulling up here. And this does not have the new refers API. So this is mimicking a registry as it is today without any of the new functionality. I'm also going to turn off all the TLS because as fast as I'm typing on these slides here, if you watch me type a bunch of OpenSSL commands, you'll be asleep by the end of this demo, and I don't want that to happen, right? Second registry I'm spinning up is, called a, pro is a project called Zot, and so that one a lot of you probably haven't heard of. They are one of the early adopters of this. They pretty much made an OCI-specific registry that only implements the OCI media types, and they do have the new APIs in here for at least one of the earlier release candidates. So I did kind of back some of my demos up to not the most recent release candidate with the artifact type, but I got at least a couple of those. Last thing, I'm copying an image over. So I just copied one specific platform over into the first registry, and I'll go ahead and grab the digest from this. And from that, we're gonna see, is this just a regular image? We haven't done anything fancy yet. We just spun up two registry servers, and I've got one image copied over into, the, into my registry. And if I scroll up here, you'll see I've got a handful of layers. The config is in there like you've seen before, and this is just a regular image manifest. Nothing fancy, this is kind of what everybody has today as you, as you have an image that's on a registry. So now we need to attach data to it. So for that, what I've got for this sample is I'm gonna go ahead and use SIFT because they are the nice easy button for me. I promise that to turn people when you get me the easy button, I will use you in all my demos just going this point forward. But I do have, I'm piping the output of that into this regcuddle artifact put command. I pass the dash s subject to say when I'm gonna push this artifact with the subject field pointing to this other image that's already up there. I'm gonna set some media types. So I'm gonna say this is the media type for the, my first example of Cyclone DX. So I set that for both the media type of the layer and the config media type. I can pass a couple of annotations, click that command, and boom, I now already did the first half of the demo here. I've got the artifact uploaded to my registry with the refers API and everything. So the second one, if you ever pick one uh, SBOM, you gotta pick the other one because otherwise people will blame you of picking favorites. So now the second one here, I'm gonna spin up with the SPDX example. Again, the same idea. I've got the subject field specified in here to say, set my subject to this other image that already exists, set my media types, set an annotation. And now for the third example, I will go ahead and spin up cosine. And so cosine, normally when you do the sign here, it spins up an extra tag on the side with a dot sig on the end. In this case, I specify an extra flag in there with the, exper with the experimental environment variable as well that says go ahead and have the registry refer in there. With that, I just uploaded three different um, artifacts into there. <coughs> Sorry. So, it's uploaded, how can we query it? It's no good if you can't query it, right? So for that, I'm gonna go ahead and say, let's do an artifact listing. And if I say do an artifact listing for our app image that's already up there, I now have three different artifacts associated with my container image. And let me go ahead and show you, well first I've got a tag in there, so you can see the tag did show up, this was with the red tree, it doesn't have the new API. But if I scroll back up, you can see that this has got three different descriptors. And the first one's gonna be for, let's see, well, first it is an image index, as we've already gotten an OCI already. We've got the artifact type on the first one is gonna be cosine it is, and then down below we've got Cyclone DX, and down at the bottom is gonna be SPDX. So there are three different things that we've got referencing our image. So just like that, I didn't have to know anything else about this stuff, I just knew that my container image I pulled down had that one you know, digest whatever it was, its name, and I was able to find all the data that was associated with it. So now, if I do the manifest git on that funny looking tag with the, with the SHA-256 dash and the rest of the digest in there, you see that exact same content, that's exactly how I got it. The tag points to the exact metadata you saw earlier. So that's how we're shipping this stuff around the registry. Nothing fancy, it's just, it's just another tag out there. So this is something that the clients have to manage though. If I run this artifact get command and I say get me the artifact with the subject field of this app image and I filter and say give me just the Cyclone DX, this is the easy button for the end users. They don't know anything about the, how we're associating this data. They just say give me the artifact of this type that points to this image and just like that, they're gonna click enter on this thing and boom, you've got your SBOM right there. So super easy for end clients to pull this stuff down if they need to. All right, so we were able to query it. I did promise a couple of registries. I got the new version in here as well. So if I use Zot, I'm gonna copy this image over from my one registry over to Zot. I kicked this off in two phases because Zot currently has a bug where they wanna have the refers pushed after I push the rest of the layers. I'm working with them on that one. It's an open issue with them and they're looking at it right now. 
but I then pass this dash dash refer flag, and that just says copy not only image, but all the refers with that image. So just like that, I now have all the content copied over there. And if I do the artifact listing, I'm gonna see that I have my image, and I'm gonna see that I also have all the different content that points to that image. And there's same three artifacts. The SPDX, the Cyclone DX, and the cosine signing in there, if I go through all those. So the nice thing, though, is that earlier when you were looking at the tag listing, if I run the tag list command down below, you're gonna see just app. I don't have that long digest in there. So for the end users, this is nice. For the users pushing this stuff, it's even nicer because this is all managed by the server. That refers API is what I hit. Since it's managed by the server, we got rid of all the race conditions. You don't have to worry about two clients colliding with each other. And we've simplified the workflow a lot for the end users that way. So that's the easy demo right there. Right there, you know, we've got this. This is just in tools that are out there today. We can use this. Um, let me show you that it isn't just these two tools. So I'm gonna pick on Aorus. They're another one of the projects out there in the ecosystem that has their implementation of this. They had previously done their own version and then they adopted the new stuff. And so you can see if I pick both 5001 and 5002 for my two repos, I've got those artifacts. So it found it with the tag and with the refers API. If I query cosine, both on the repo one and repo two, you're gonna see it's gonna find the assigning data for this image. It outputs a lot of data in the cosine output, but it was good. It was a verified output that saw both of them there. And I can also hit a regular registry in production, GitHub container registry out there in the field today. I can query that and see that I have a container image on that registry right now with artifacts attached to it. So this is just in the real world. You don't have to wait for somebody to upload something. This, this is real right now that it works. And that's because a lot of what we design in here works with registries as they are in the existing version with a forward you know, upgradeable, upgradeability in there built into the, what we made. In addition, I showed you that Reg Cuddle can do an existing registry for us as well. I don't wanna pick all the tooling favorites, so I can show you that as well. And so just like that, yeah, we've got this out there for multiple registries in the real world, multiple tools that's using us. So where are we at? Well, mentioned we are with the release candidates. So we've got uh, RC3 for the image spec, RC2 for the distribution spec, where we've got this data out there. And so this is an OCI, we've got a spec that defines how we define all this data, all those fields we're defining in the image manifest, all the JSON out there. We also have the distribution spec that has all the APIs that we added. So the new refers API and how that response is supposed to come back, that's defined in the distribution spec. So that is out there in a release candidate, which means we're looking for people to test this out and let us know how it works for them. In addition, the image manifest, we now have this new artifact type field in there. And so I wanna give you a little bit of an idea of what's going on with that. What we decided was not everybody has a config that they're pushing up there. And so if you don't have your own dedicated config, say you're just trying to push an SBOM, it would be nice if you didn't have to make a config for that SBOM and someone upstream like the SPDX crew or someone like that has to define some OCI specific config data to ship their, data, to ship their SBOMs. It's nice to just say, I'm just shipping this SPDX JSON data and to not have a config. And so you can define that just by specifying the artifact type. And then we have a field in there, I think I might have had on an earlier slide, where the config just has a scratch field in there, which just says this is empty, there's no data in it. And so if you specify that, we've got that in the spec now of how we want to do that. And otherwise, yeah, ready for testing, ready for people to play around with is what we're looking for. In terms of, in terms of registries, um, both Zot and Harbor have support for the RC, um, RC1 slash two, depending on which of the specs we're looking at. I think Zot is quickly coming up with a release, with a support for the latest releases. I think I saw a PR getting merged like earlier this week, so they might already be there. Harbor uh, adds support for one of our early, earlier release candidates, so they'll probably have a little bit of work to get the next version updated. We are blocked on a couple of registries, so if you're using Docker Hub, if you're using ECR, those are explicitly blocking this, this kind of data. What they're blocking it for is this very last bullet point on the slide there, which says that registries need to go back and retroactively find all the stuff that had been uploaded before they add the new API and include that in their output of the refers response. And they said, we don't want to retroactively go back through the entirety of Docker Hub. They've got a little bit of data. Um, they don't want to go back and rescan everything. So what they've said is they don't want to go back and retroactively do that. ECR, they have a different take on things. Anything that isn't explicitly in the spec, they don't support. And so even though the spec says you're allowed to ex extend stuff, ECR says we want to keep things locked down a little bit. And so because of that, until we hit the GA, they're gonna hold that on lockdown and they won't support the field. But as soon as we hit GA, 
both of those should unlock very quickly, and there'll be support on both sides. And I've seen Docker Hub do work on their part. They actually had this enabled for a short while before they realized we were bickering back and forth, and they turned it back off real quickly. And the ECR has told us that they're ready to go. They're just waiting for us to hit the GA button, and, and they'll turn it on. So we're looking good on both those. GitLab is on the slide because at last check, and I'd love to work with them to see if we can get some better progress on this. They have an allow list of what other kinds of artifacts they allow on their registry. So if you're not a container image, if you're not a Helm chart, you need to go to them to get them to put you on an allow list of different artifacts they're going to allow on their registry. And so that's just their design decision. I'd love to see them allow anything so that any users can be flexible in what they're doing, but that's we're not there yet today. So other than those, if you're not on this list, either I haven't tested you, which good possibility I haven't. There are a lot of registries out there. But for the most part, registries just work with this because this was all built in the spec already and then we're extending it with other fields. And so this, this is something you can use today on just about everywhere. The request that we've got for registry servers, please don't filter. And then, yeah, that last bullet point, when you enable this, you need to start going back and making sure that anybody pushed some of this data before that you support. And the way you can tell if you're a registry operator is that you can go back and look for anybody that pushed that special tag with that big long die just at the end of it. Then you know you need to go look for this stuff. So hopefully you wouldn't have to scan every repo but for safety's sake, some folks just said, no, we're going to wait on it. For the clients, I think we got a couple of people here on the client side in the room. For them, um, we're looking for more client support. We've got a bunch already. So we've got Cosign out there. We've got Oris out there. We've got the Reg client you saw me demoing earlier that I've written. So those are up and running with this. I'd love to see more support. I'd love to see if you're running that SIF command and you say, I want to scan that generate the SBOM for this image, that it just pushes it up there as refer immediately right away to the side of that image, and you don't have to do this extra little pipe through a command that uploads it to the registry. I'd love to just see it automatically shipped. That would be a great place to be in. Um, for clients, they do need to manage that fallback tag, and so that does have the risk of a race condition. If you have two different clients updating this tag simultaneously, you can have conflicts, you can have people undoing it. I say that, I put that in the spec, I have documented it, and then I just shot myself in the foot the other day because I added concurrency to my own code, and then I forgot that I had this issue in there, and so all of a sudden my code was concurrently updating the same field and over itself. I've since fixed that. Um, other requests we've got people pick appropriate artifact types. Um, if you've ever done anything in terms of IANA and registered media type with IANA, they have got a way to register them. If you don't want to register it, you can use like some reverse DNS syntax in your dot notation in there. They've got ways you can specify that. <coughs> so with that, we're hoping that you know you can push stuff up there where it belongs to your project and nobody else. You don't have conflicts on that, uh, artifact type but also that people can find your stuff. So if you push an SPDX SBOM, it should not matter which tool you use to push it, everybody should be able to find the same SBOM up there. What does that mean? All right, and the last request is to use annotations responsibly. What do I mean by that? When we generate that refer's response, we've got all the different um, refer, all the different descriptors in there. We pulled up all those different annotations up to that refer's response. And that can get to be very big if everybody starts putting a whole bunch of annotations inside of their different, um, if inside of their different artifacts they're uploading. And so what we've heard back from registry operators is we've got a four megabyte limit on that overall index response, and they want to be able to have 100 different responses minimum inside that listing. They kind of want to just be able to cap it, and we, we have pagination options in there. So if you have more than 100, you can hit the refers API and say, give me page two, give me page three. So. With that, what they are hoping for is that they're going to cap it. If you start pushing annotations that extend past, I think we're looking at uh, 400 kilobytes, they're just going to reject your manifest upload and say, you got too big for us. We don't want to store this because we can't be able to put in the refers response, so we're just going to reject it in some of these registries. So if you want portability, don't push a whole lot of annotations up there. Keep it to the, just the stuff you need to be able to find the data you want, and not all the other stuff. So push through the signer is not everything in the world. You know, no kitchen sinks. So there we go. I think I saved a few minutes at the end here for questions, but it exists. Um, these slides are up online, so the QR code takes you to the presentation repo. This should be the first presentation up there as it is now. You can even click through the examples and everything. The demo script that I was running through there, you can run that shell script on your own, try it out on your local machine, see how it works. I think I'm kicking off commands like SIFT and other things. You've got to have some of these tools pre-installed. And yeah, if you have any questions and uh, after the fact from recording something like that, I'm up on Mastodon. Issues on GitHub are always welcome. I'm in the Slacks. I don't pay attention to Twitter quite as much, but I am up there still a little bit hanging on. But um, otherwise, people in the room, any questions? I know I went quick. 
Come on, Phil, you gotta be wondering how this stuff works, right? <laughs> Go ahead, question back. Do I need to get a mic? We need to get a mic to you. Yeah. All right, sit back here. So, okay. Question? Talk like a ice cream cone. Yeah, okay. Right. Got it. First of all, I, I love the OCI storage kind of um, movement. It's, uh, for me, mind bending. Uh, but what happens when like two people like upload to the same repo, like uh, the same S file, I upload the same S file to the same image twice at the if, same time? If it is completely identical, we've got the content addressable store the digest match. And so the registry itself sees that I've got this same layer being pushed up with the same digest. It deduplicates on the registry site. So what happens in the manifest? On the manifest itself, it's also content addressable. It's got the same digest on the manifest itself. That JSON gets uh, serialized, and then that serialization gets digested as well, hashed as well, and so that would match as well. If they do truly push two separate, you know, similar but not completely equal, you know, maybe they aren't completely reproducible, you've got a different timestamp, something like that, you would end up having two different S-bombs attached to your image. But maybe you'd have metadata in there saying this was a different creation time and you would prefer the newer one or something along those lines. So when two people upload two manif manifests to the same index, it's, it's not like, it won't yeah. like overcome the if, same one? If you are using the refers API, the refers API is generated on the registry side. It's, it's doing all that concurrency work for you. It's deduplicating, you know, it's, it's doing the lock contention or it's eventually consistent. Either way, it's gonna sort that out and you will have both of those in your response. If you are using that tag, then the client's responsible for that and the clients are doing a best effort. And so what the client is gonna do is it's gonna pull the tag as it is right now and say, who's already got a manifest uploaded? It looks empty, or maybe it's got one from something other previously before, and if someone else did the exact same thing simultaneously, and you both did the same thing, the first person to push would get overwritten by the second person that pushed. And so that's where that race condition assists, and that's why you want to get this onto the server side. That's why it's better to have the server doing the refers API than it is to have clients doing the tag. But yeah, that's, some, that's a limited race condition that exists. Yeah, Parth, grab the mic. Switch on the bottom. Um, so my question is in terms of like attestations. I, I apologize if you covered this already, um, but is the like for example, salsa attestations, right? You can upload that to OCI. But what about other like ITE six in total attestations? How does it like differ? So if I want to be like I want to upload. Salsa attestation, another IT6 that could be a runtime attestation or something. Yeah. Could, could I do that and could it differentiate between the two when I can pull down something? Yep, everybody should have in their response when they're coming back up to here, they should have a different artifact type for that. And so in the listing here, you would pick a media type for your specific artifact and that artifact type field would be, I've got this kind of attestation with this data in there. And if they're both the same artifact type, maybe you have some other D different, uh, differentiation that gets included in those annotations as well. And so either of those, that's gonna be in your artifact that you upload and those get pulled up into the refers, into the refers response. Uh, Uh-oh. No, 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 I, <laughs> no, no tough questions, but I, I'm pretty sure, I, sadly I don't keep up well enough, but well, in your list of clients, I'm pretty sure the Notary V2 latest RC has, or the notar notation client has refers APIs. They, they do, they use ORS as their backing. And oh, so, so you, okay. yeah, so they so use ORS Go on the back end, so the yes, they do. Cool. Yep. It is good to have more clients in there though. Okay, I had to ask. <laughs> uh, what happens when uh, you delete a manifest? Oh, the garbage collection question. Someone's gonna ask that, right, okay. Um, there's debate. Um, OCI is good for having debates, and so we, we haven't gotten to the bottom of that debate. Um, one side of it says that if you have got one of these things uploaded to a registry with the refers and the subject points to a manifest that no longer exists, 
and your artifact itself isn't tagged, there is nothing pointing to that anymore, and so the registry should be allowed to garbage collect it. Um, the, the flip side is that if you're pushing this stuff up there with the fallback tag, that fallback tag itself gives you that persistence, so the registry is never going to clean those up, and so if you want to keep consistency with the old, you would, you would not delete them. And the, the third kind of take on that is that we haven't defined garbage collection anywhere else in the OCI spec, so let's uh, stay away from this debate and avoid it entirely. And so we're somewhere in the middle of all three of those right now. It's uh, not the easy, not the good answer, but yeah, it, it, there is debate. If, if there's debate, how, what do you, how do registries treat it today, just however they want? It is implementation specific, yeah. And so each registry can say, we're gonna implement garbage collection this way. Um, for example, if you had talked to some registries, they say anything that's untagged is now eligible to be deleted and we're gonna clean it up. But if you talk to Docker Hub, they'll say if you have tag something, and it has had a tag at some point in its lifetime, and that tag has not been deleted, they keep a history of everything a tag has ever pointed to, and they don't garbage collect any of those objects. So different registries implement garbage collection differently. There are registries out there that just delete everything after 48 hours. Um, they just have a routine thing, an open registry, something like that. So different registries have different implementations, and so we have left that up in OCI as an implementation-specific detail. So if you need a guarantee that an SBOM would be available in a year or two years, then you need to make sure you're picking the right registry. <laughs> yeah, um, don't pick the registry. It automatically deletes everything after one day. That, that would be the good option. Um, but beyond that, I think the safe option is if you're pointing your artifact to a manifest that still exists, I think we're expecting that that artifact is going to stick around. We're hoping so. OK, one more for Parth in the back. Take, take the mic. For the recording. Um, like, What is the timeline for the OCI registries to uh, implement this? Or is, that, is this already live? Oh, timelines for things? We, we're terrible at timelines. We, we debate too long. Um, it's whenever we finally get the GA release is, I think, the big thing. But the, the there you go. The, the important uh, detail here is that this is a release candidate. So it is out there. And everything that we showed without the whole refers API is within spec, and so it does work. So I think the thing some people are waiting on is to say, hey, Docker Hub doesn't quite support this yet. We want to see that support. We want to see ECR. That's going to wait for GA. Um, we have another release candidate that just got put out there. We probably have one more after that because we want to get some compliance code and some other stuff updated on our side. We got a few loose ends to tidy up. But as long as we don't have any major changes, I, you know, I, I'd love to see it over the summer go out. Cool. Oh, one more. Is that okay? Yep, you're on. Yeah. What if I want to point like an artifact to an artifact? Can you like have a tree like under my? Say a little louder, right? Hand. I have an artifact. Mm -hmm. I connected my S bomb to my image, and now I want to connect a scan to my S bomb, like a CV scan to my S bomb. I don't want mm -hmm. to connect it to the image. I want to like go down. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's somewhere we want to get to. And I think that comes down to the client tooling that needs to be aware that there are these referrers out there. And so the scanners, we'd love to see this get implemented in the scanners to see that there is an S-Balm in this image. I don't have to rescan the image. I can just use the S-Balm that's attached to the image and run my vulnerability scan based off of that. We want to get there. Um, and so that comes down to the client tooling starting to implement this directly in there. But short of that, I think a lot of scanners these days allow you to input the yes bomb in there directly instead of inputting the image, and so you can manually do it if you wanted to. All right. I think with that, thank you.